buongiorno! So initially I was gonna do my October wrap up part one and my tour wrap up part two, but now I'm realizing that I only actually read four books in the first two weeks of October because I was so busy reading stuff for school. So it just kind of didn't really make any sense to do a part one video of just four books. So instead, I because I need to return some of these books to the library, but I still want to like show off the books because they're graphic novels. I decided that I'm gonna film the first half of this wrap up now, and then when October is over, I'm gonna film the rest of this wrap up. And I'll combine two clips into one. The first books I read in October were two graphic novels by Katie O'Neill, Aquacorn Core, and Princess Princess Ever After. I loved the Tea Dragon Society by this author so much. Her art style is just so cutesy and her message of her books are just always so beautiful and heartwarming and I knew I needed to read more of her graphic novels. So I requested them from the library and they came in and oh my god, I loved this one. Let's start with this one. This is the one I started first. So this book is really short. It's only like 50 pages, but Oh my god, look how cute it is. It's basically a female female fairy tale romance. Like like think tangled but gay. Like it's awesome. I loved it. And the art style was just so cutesy. Like, oh my god. I love it so so much. It's the ugh, I love it. It's so cute. I finished this in like, I don't know, 30 minutes. It was just the cutest thing ever. And I highly recommend this if you love cutesy heartwarming graphic novels, especially this is definitely perfect for like little kids too or like middle grade age. Like the, the language is really simple and I think this is geared towards like little kids and it has like the fairy tale like Disney like element to it. Yeah, I highly recommend this. I really really loved it. It made me smile so much like I was literally like smiling the entire time reading this and I loved it so much. Five out of five stars, without a doubt. I highly recommend this. Please read this and more of Katie Henry's books. It just looks so cute, the style is. Like, oh my God, I can't. And then of course, the great, I gotta show you. Okay, it's not a spoiler. It's a fairy tale romance. What do you expect? Of course they end up together at the end, but look how cute and seen is. They're getting married. It's so cute. I love it so much. This is just, this book is so precious. Please read this. The other book, I think I'm, this might be just be my favorite Katie Henry book just because it deals with the sea and sea creatures and it's basically like a big PSA uh, to take care of our ocean, take care of our environment and please be aware that we are damaging our environment and we need to do something about it. This was basically what the book was about but with magical sea creatures and underwater societies. Oh my God, that's literally like my favorite. Like I'm obsessed with mermaids and I love the sea. You know, I'm actually terrified about the ocean yet I just love the sea and underwater creatures. Maybe it's just the fact that like mermaids can breathe underwater so it makes the sea less scary when you're a mermaid. So it's adorable. I love it. Look how cute it is. Again, the, the art style is just the cutest, most precious thing ever. And oh my god, wait, I gotta show you the underwater, the underwater creatures. So basically they're called aquacorns. They're basically like seahorses, but also like unicorns. And they're so cute. And there's also a female female romance in this too, but one of the secret one of the sea creatures. I just love how Katie O'Neill has just casual diversity in her books. Like there's always people of color in her books. There's always plus size main characters in their books. There's always queer people in her books. There's always so much diversity in her books and it's always really casual and nobody ever says anything about it. It's just so normal and I just love that. I just I want more of that in graphic novels and just in stories in general. Just casual diversity and it's just there. I love it. I think I gotta say just because this deals with the sea and the art style in general, it has to be my favorite, but probably the Tea Dragon Society is my favorite too. I don't know. I just, I love all her graphic novels. They're so cute and I highly recommend them if you just want like cute, sweet graphic novels. They're just so precious, her books. That's all for graphic novels. Now let's talk about audiobooks. The first one, I was initially going to be reading this for the latinx a because the main character is Afro-Latinx. Shadow Shaper! 
So I really wanted to listen to this because I actually found out that Princess Tiana, the voice actress for Princess Tiana, narrates this audiobook and oh my gosh, she did such a great job narrating this audiobook. But I did have a few issues with this book. The world is really interesting, but the execution was lacking. I zoned out so much during this audiobook, which could just be like my fault, but also, I don't know, when I tried like reading the book physically, I also noticed that I wasn't paying attention as much and I wasn't super interested in what was happening in the book. So I, I think it was just a book problem. I gave this book three stars. It's definitely a good book, but the execution was lacking in some ways. And there were a lot of things that were not explained about this world. Like there were some things that just would happen and I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, what does that even mean? And like, it wouldn't be explained. I don't know if I want to continue on with this series. I'm not sure. I mean, I wasn't a huge fan of the first book, so probably not. But if I hear really good things about the second book being like a lot better than the first book, maybe I might continue. This actress for Princess Tiana does such an amazing job. And there's also Spanish in this book. And she like, I, get, I don't know if she speaks Spanish or she took some like courses because the Spanish was really good. Next, I listened to this audiobook that I completely listened to on a whim. So basically, Epic Reads does this thing where, or is it Penguin? Is it Epic Reads or Penguin? It, it one or both maybe, where they post like the first chapter of an audiobook on their YouTube channel and also their Instagram. So I was scrolling through Instagram once and it, the first chapter of this audiobook had started playing just randomly. And I was really entranced by this audiobook and it was really funny and I really liked the first chapter of it. So I decided that, you know what, let me just on a whim just read this audiobook that I know nothing about, I haven't really heard about it. And that audiobook is obviously by Akila Hughes. So apparently Akila Hughes is a YouTuber. I had never heard about her before. She also works in TV and she's really successful. I had never heard about her before and I didn't even know about this book, but the first chapter of the book was so funny, so insightful, and really interesting. It grabbed my attention right away, and I knew I really wanted to read more of it. So I requested the audiobook, and it came in, and this was such a delightful read. I really want to read more, like, memoirs slash, like, this is, she says this is kind of like a self-help book, but I feel like it's more like a memoir, like, and she narrates the audiobook herself, so it's basically, it's like she's telling you her story, and it's really interesting. I really want to get in more into memoirs and autobiographies, especially when the audiobook narrator is the author itself. It's such an amazing experience because it really just feels like the author is telling you their own story in their own words, and it's really, really amazing. If you have any more recommendations for books like this, I have already read the Mindy Kaling books. I love the Mindy Kaling books. If you have any more recommendations for this, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a celebrity person, just somebody that is like has a memoir for whatever reason and they narrate their own audiobook. Like, let me know because I, I kind of like this genre. Like, it's actually really interesting. So let me know if you have any recommendations. I really, really love this one. I think I gave it four stars. I mean, yeah, it was wildly entertaining, but it wasn't like, you know, life changing, like five stars. So I highly recommend it if you just want like a really fun, like entertaining, easy to get into audiobook. I personally had no idea who she was, which I think was actually really cool because I went into it like completely blind, not knowing nothing. And I was completely blown away by it. So those are all of the books I read in the first half of October. I'll see you in like two seconds for the second half of October. Now I'm gonna be doing part two of my October wrap up. Yeah, it's been some time, but let's get into it. Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. So I actually went to a event of Ruta Sepetis. She came near me. I didn't actually meet her because the signing line was really long and there was a lot of people there. Well, she came like an hour away from me. Like I did have to drive a little bit to see her. An hour drive home. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just leave. But it, she was really wonderful. Like I've never seen Ruta Sepetis before. Sepetis. She actually said her name is Sepetis. That's how you say it. Sepetis. And she was so wonderful. I'm really happy that I read The Fountains of Sands and I finally read a Ruta Shepetis books because I've always heard nothing but amazing things about her books. And I'm so happy that I finally got to read one. This Fountains of Silence is her newest book. I listened to the audiobook because it has so many different narrators. So I figured it'd be a good experience and it was. It takes place in Spain during the Franco dictatorship. And it was so interesting learning about the Franco dictatorship. Cause the thing is we think of hidden history as things that people don't know about but depending on where you live 
the Franco dictatorship is taught in certain schools in Europe because Europe had a part in this. In American schools, you don't learn about the Franco dictatorship, but in Italian schools, you do because Mussolini, he's the one who helped put Franco in power. So you learn about that in Italian schools. There's a lot of other European countries who do teach about the Franco dictatorship. So when we think about hidden histories, it's really only Americans that don't know about certain things. I mean, definitely there are some countries that don't know about um, other hidden histories as well. But I feel like when people think of hidden history, sometimes it's really like the Americans don't know about it because American curriculum is very America focused. And if it doesn't have to do with America, they don't teach it. Loved this book. It was such an interesting look into the Franco dictatorship what it was like for people during that time. Like I learned so much about this era that I did not know about before. And it was just so cool, like learning about history in this format through this like story that it was very slow moving. It took me a long time to get into this book. I did listen to the audiobook and it took me like, I think two or three hours of listening till I finally got into this book. It's a very slow moving book. So if you're looking for a fast paced historical fiction novel, this is not it. It's very slow moving, it's very character driven. I really loved it. I believe I gave this four stars because it took me so long to get into it. But if I had not taken me so long to get into it, it definitely would have been a five star read. I was looking at, uh, at coming releases on my library's website and I saw this picture book called Sului. I think that's how you say it written by Lupita Nyong'o and if you don't recognize that name it's one of the women from Black Panther so I saw the name I was like oh my god what she's written a picture book and also it says it's illustrated by Vasti Harrison which I follow Vasti Harrison online her artwork is absolutely amazing she exclusively draws black women and black children her artwork is just absolutely beautiful so when I saw this picture book was being done by like two of my favorite women I was like oh my god I gotta read this and it was amazing it did not disappoint this is basically a picture book about this girl who is very dark-skinned compared to her sister and to other peers and she's bullied and teased for being dark-skinned and she feels ashamed for being dark-skinned and she one night wishes that she was light-skinned and she kind of goes on to this journey of finding figuring out herself and also coming to terms with the fact that she is dark skinned but there's beauty in that and it was just so heartwarming I just love that there's a author's note at the end by Lupita and she talks about how growing up she was always very dark skinned and it took her a really long time for her to accept the fact that dark skin could be beautiful I loved this picture book and I'm so happy that it exists for other dark skinned girls to see themselves in books and not feel ashamed of being dark skinned I really really loved it and I highly recommend it I read a DNF, which I'm so sad about. My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich by E.B. Zavoy. E.B. Zavoy is one of my all-time favorite authors. I've literally loved and instant favorited all of her books. I was so excited when she announced that she was doing a middle grade book that takes place, I think, during the moon landing or I forget something something space related it takes place during that time it's not like present time and I found out that the audiobook is actually narrated by EB I was so freaking excited and I ended up DNFing this at like 30% I think and I'm so sad about that but the thing is just like the way this book is written is just so strange basically the main character lives in her imagination she's a child that she used to live with her mother but for whatever I forget why she needs to go live with her father and he lives in like a poor neighborhood that her mom and she's struggling to adjust to this new neighborhood and everything and because she's struggling to adjust she kind of escapes into her own imagination not told straightforward sometimes you'll be in her imagination sometimes you'll be in the real world and it gets really confusing because you don't know what is real and what is not and then she also uses really weird like space terms and she kind of turns in everything into like a space movie a, like a space type story and it just got really confusing and weird and I just couldn't read it anymore and I just had to DNF it and I'm so sad about this because I love Evie's a boy so so much like all of her books were like instant five stars favorites like I was so sad about this but I had to DNF it I'm getting more into picture books and I never thought this would happen after I read Sully I actually found out that Katie O'Neill which is one of my favorite graphic novel artists she wrote to Two Dragon Society actually 
was is writing a picture book. It comes out in May and I got an arc of it and I was so excited. Dewdrop by Katie O'Neill. This took me like five minutes to read. Oh my god, the art style was the cutest thing ever. The story was so adorable. I loved this. If you like picture books, you need definitely need to check this one out. And if you have a child, check this one out because oh my god, it was great. I loved it. And then I just found this random picture book and I just read it because it has a dog on it. And, and, and this is actually a really old picture book. It's called Macduff Moves In. I think it's from the 90s. The dog was really cute. Cute, and so I read it and it was a really cute story and it just kind of reminds me of like the picture book that I used to read as a child like I still am but like when I was a child I was really obsessed with dogs and I still am really obsessed with dogs so when I was a child like anytime I would see a picture book with a dog on it like I would instantly read it and I'd be like obsessed with it and I would like pretend that like that dog was my dog like I loved dogs so much as a child and I still do so this just kind of reminded me of the picture books I used to read as a child and made me like really nostalgic and I really loved it so I read the manga of Jane Eyre okay I mean hello and anything new on this channel and trash for Jane Eyre like I'll read every edition ever this is the manga of Jane Eyre and I love this this is one of the best Jane Eyre adaptations I've ever read I've listened I've read the graphic novel of Jane Eyre but I didn't really like that one too much because the art style was like a little strange and the dialogue was very modernized and I didn't like it. This book took all of the language of Jane Eyre. It didn't change any of it. All it did was just adapt it to a manga. Like I loved it. They didn't change anything. Like all the dialogue was the same. All the quotes were the same. The only thing that was different is this was in visual format. It was so fun. Like it was so fun reliving Jane Eyre through this format. And now I really want to go read more like classic mangas because this is such a cool format to read from. Like I love it. This book I read in October, I finished on Halloween, The Witch Boy by Molly Osterhag. Uh, Knox Ostertag. I don't know. But basically this is about, the, it's a graphic novel about this boy who wants to be a witch but in his society, boys are supposed to be shapeshifters and girls are supposed to be witches. And I really loved this. It was a super quick read. I think I finished it in like 30 minutes. I really loved that this tackled gender roles and gender expectations. And it was just like a, such a cute, like sweet story. The art style was really beautiful too. I highly recommend this one. And it was perfect for the spooky season. Those are all the books I read in October. I had a pretty great reading month. Although I did read quite a few picture books and graphic novels and mangas. So maybe that's why and audiobooks, but I had a really great reading month in October. I definitely didn't read anything on my TBR. <laughs> It's fine, it's fine. Comment down below what was your favorite book you read in October or what is your favorite spooky read? My social media links are all down below. My Twitter, my Instagram, my Goodreads. Arrivederci.